Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be painting Falling Into Place, starting on a white primed with gesso 11 by 14 canvas using the following colors. And I'm going to be going over these throughout the video and have a full list below in the description. We're going to start off with a blending brush. Here I just got a soft stipple brush. I've got neon pink and neon yellow warm. I'm going to use a little bit of water on my brush and the canvas as well that you didn't see in the beginning. I just wet my canvas a little bit. That just helps to make a slick surface and spread that paint around and blend it a little bit easier. And what I didn't mean to do, and it just ended up happening on its own there, is a little rainbow. So I decided to keep that there and start adding all the other colors for the rainbow. I've got my cadmium yellow here that I'm coming around the edges with. And just softly blending in around the outside as well as adding it to part of the rainbow. Now I haven't washed my brush off or picked up any water yet. And I'm just taking some sap green and I'm going to lightly start to stipple and tap in some foliage all around the edges of the canvas. Now I've got a filbert brush and I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, a little bit of water and white, and I'm going to go right through to make a nice brighter yellow for my rainbow and then I'm also going to add a little bit in and around the edges of the foliage creating a softer tone of green and a light yellowy green color. So as I go around the edges here just adding the highlight to all the foliage I'm going to incorporate some uh, at the base of the painting too for this landscape and along where I'm going to have my waterfalls and a little pathway. So I'm just going to dust and blend side to side again just with that bit of yellow and white with the green that I'm picking up because I'm painting wet on wet. So when I'm tapping into the foliage I'm kind of picking up a little bit of that green. Now if you look really closely you can see here how I'm using my brush. I'm tapping flat the full width of the brush and then I'm also tapping on the side and the edge at times too just to get a different uh, texture and type of foliage so it looks like there's different uh, leaves and branches and bushes in there. It changes things up. Now I'm taking some white with my uh, light blue. After I've washed it off, I'm just going to mix those up and then get a line of it on the edge or the end of my brush and do just a line of that right next to the yellow so and partially over the yellow so it creates a green color and then a blue and white run right underneath for my blue of course and then take a little bit of my neon pink blend it up, mix it with a little bit of my blue and white to create a light violet shade. I'm going to add a little bit down here, just slide in my brush side to side. All right, so I'm gonna start working on my little cottage here cabin and I've got a number eight, I believe, flat brush. I got it a little bit wet first and I'm gonna take a combination of black and burnt sienna. Of course, you can use any brown that you want and make or make your house any color that you want. I'm gonna paint my roof um, sort of slanted on just a little bit of an angle so it comes up slightly higher for the front of the house and then the back end of the house dips down a little bit lower and then I'm gonna pull back and forth. This will help give that illusion of siding or 
uh, logs and then I'm gonna make some lines by taking a little bit of my white and mixing it with my burnt sienna. I'm gonna paint my roof a lot lighter so I'll be using more white and then I'll also be adding a dark shadow just right under that roof line so I'll be taking a little bit of black and burnt sienna for my darkest shadows. First I'll paint the roof a dark brown base with my burnt sienna and then I'll come in later and highlight it with my white. And I'll be adding a few little windows and uh, the, just the indication of some shutters on either side. And just be creative, guys, and pick whatever colors that you want for your uh, little shutters. I think I'm just going to go with white and maybe tint my white with a little bit of that blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a veranda. Um, a few little lines with my white and my blue. I'll be adding a few um, little hydrangea bushes and it's all just about creating your own little sanctuary and type of landscape that you would like to have uh, your little cabin um, in. So just kind of go with what speaks to you and certainly follow along step by step with me if you want to paint your cottage and your shutters and your flowers all the same color um, no problem with that at all and i'm just going to take my little flat brush here with a little bit more of my burnt sienna add a little just tap in a little line for my chimney and then pull and sweep on a little angle for the shadow that falls on the roof from the chimney i'll add a little door and all my windows and my shutters And here with a clean brush, just taking a little bit of my light blue with my white, I'm going to add little accents, shutters, trim, my little veranda, and I'm also going to use this color for the little puff of smoke coming out of the chimney top. Now by using a little bit of blue to tint the white, it just really makes that smoke pop against the peachy background it won't quite look the same if you use only white for that so just keep that in mind there's a rhyme and reason for tinting your whites with colors uh, for your highlights in your paintings so i'm just going to tap in a bunch of little lines really close together using um, this size of flat brush that happens to be just perfect for uh, the size of my little railing here on my veranda and I think I mentioned earlier I'm using a number eight flat brush and then I'm going to do just a little uh, roof line here so we'll have a covered veranda and just using that white and blue And I'm going to come in and start creating a few little lines here for my staircase and I've used burnt sienna there with a little bit of black you can use just burnt sienna if you want and then I'll add the uh, highlights for the tops of my stairs with my white and my blue and I thought I would just do a little half moon window above at the top there and then an arched shape door a little bit of black inside the windows Now I've switched over to a really small filbert brush and I'm going to start adding some little window boxes. You can't see the boxes and you can really can't see too much of the flowers because this is so small. Um, and I'm just taking a bit of my yellow and my green and just tapping a little bit of foliage um, on the side of the staircase as well. And then I'll be adding some light pink flowers to my window boxes and some hydrangea bushes. I'm just going to pull and sweep and kind of blend that green out to make it start to pull and sweep into um, the frame of foliage that we have around the outside of the painting. And then with a clean liner brush, a few little dabs of pink and white. You can add a little bit of uh, 
pink and yellow together if you want or pink and blue just decide whatever color you want and make really make it your own so whatever your favorite flowers are um i i really love flowers it's kind of hard for me to to choose uh what i like more roses or hydrangeas but those are my uh, top two favorites um so here i've really got spring um, on my mind and I decided to go with those spring colors of hydrangeas the blues and the mauves and the pinks and then I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and my green again and just add a little bit more of a base of green and some shadows here uh, by those hydrangeas and on the grass so a lighter green first and then I'll take a darker green and just kind of pull and sweep for a little bit of a shadow And I'm going to use that same color to continue along making my staircase come down a little bit further. So I'm making those stairs a little bit wider as they get closer to the foreground. And I'm just going to gently pull and sweep and blend out softly the shadows. I'm going to take a little bit of white and re-highlight and add more highlights to the staircase. Just kind of freshen everything up. And then now I'm going to go into pink, yellow, and white with my flat brush and just kind of pull along the roof line. I'm going to leave a little space there for my shadow from my chimney. And then I'm going to do a very thin little line on the other side of the roof. I'm going to take some phthalo blue with a flat brush, just a tiny bit of water so that I can blend and pull that paint around a lot easier. I'm gonna have a pretty little pool right down here, and then I'm gonna do short little wiggles side to side, back and forth, making it smaller and smaller, and kind of uh, weave in and out, creating a, a nice little flow, and bring that kind of up towards behind the house. I'll even add a little bit of my sap green to my phthalo blue on either side at the bottom, just to create a little bit more depth and more of like an, an emerald green color that I just thought would be really pretty. And then with a clean brush, I'm coming in with some white and here I'm gonna start all my little waterfall tiers and levels and just really, really have fun with creating all these little mini waterfalls that just fall and cascade down the left side of the canvas and start up on a mountain and hill that we can't really see because it's pretty misty and faded way back in the distance. So they're going to be a lot more detailed uh, here in the foreground. And there's a few different brushes that you can use for painting waterfalls. You know, I paint a lot of waterfalls, so every, almost every one of my uh, paintings has a waterfall somewhere in it. And you guys are probably um, learning a lot from all the repetition and painting them all the time. So it's really important to do things a lot if you want to practice and get better at them. Uh, but yeah, I've got a lot of different videos and I use a few different brushes. You can use a filbert brush, flat brush, a uh, fan brush. I've even got a wisp uh, rake even tail brush that I used sometimes to show you guys. Um, so here I'm just kind of turning my brush on an angle. I'm doing some diagonal just to create a more interesting perspective here to this uh, wall of waterfalls here on the left side. And I'm just going to keep continuing here along with my little waterfalls and my little pools. I'm only using white paint at this time. I'm not taking any blue or green on my palette to mix up colors. What's happening here on the canvas is that I'm painting wet on wet. I'm adding my white paint to my wet blue and green paint on the canvas. So as I'm doing that, it's blending on its own and creating some softer tones and shades of uh, blue and green. And here I'm actually going to mix a little bit because I need to add this color to the background. I'm not going to be picking that up anywhere. So I'm mixing it on my palette and I'm going back over with a fresh coat of white. 
I like to make sure that I, I have more white where my waterfalls start and then less as they go down to the bottom where they're falling into. Um, it's always a little bit brighter at the top. And then if you have a big, big splash, if you want to have that big splash to the, the base of your waterfalls where they're hitting the water, then you will use uh, some more white to create that spray and that splash look. And then I'm going to take a little bit of green in here and start to add um, faint little uh, green grass and hills in the back, but all very soft in tone because it is way in the background. Now I do want to have some waterfalls that stand out and show up a little bit more. So here I'm adding um, some darker, no white, just um, blue, green. You can even add a little bit of burnt sienna in there if you want to um, change that color up and make it a little bit richer. And I wanted this to be darker so that my waterfalls will really show up. So we're, we're creating contrast, right? Or highlights and shadows instantly by doing that. It'll be a lot more dramatic and show up better. I've got an angle brush that I wanted to demonstrate and show you guys and how this can be really beneficial and useful for um, painting waterfalls and and uh, you can also use of course use it for buildings and structures in your paintings but um, you may not know um, how cool it is to use for waterfalls in a painting so um, taking you know those same colors blue green white a little bit of burnt sienna here and there to add some earthiness and some rocks and and dirt and just gonna pull and and uh, curve over super easy you can create waterfalls so quickly and see how much they show up and you you have to have you don't want them to be solid right you need to do this lightly and gently and have all those little lines and streaks so you're seeing what's underneath and that will help it look more like water and make it look 3d with a clean brush and more white paint i'm going to just scumble uh, and make it look a little bit misty back there while adding more little tiers and levels of waterfalls. I'm going to start painting a bridge now, still using my angle brush. Oh, sorry, I skipped a step. <laughs> I will be adding a bridge soon, but first I'm going to be um, adding that little railing. So right in here, I'm going to just pull and curve over just a slight low little arch here. It's going to be slightly thicker on either side and darker. So you can use a little bit of black with your burnt sienna to make either side uh, underneath your bridge uh, darker and look more um, uh, like nestled in to the landscape. You give yourself a little bit of area there to come in and tap some uh, bushes and foliage and flowers or whatever you want to have on either side of your um, I, I really like to add some foliage on either side of my bridge. I think it kind of makes it have that lived in, been there a long time, nestled in kind of a feel. So here I'm going to start adding some foliage. I've got my Princeton one inch oval brush, taking my green. You can take, it depends on how dark you want your foliage to be. So if you really want um, a strong contrast or light and shadow, then you may want to add a little bit of black to your green first before you add your highlights and I just decided that I wanted to have that kind of Monet weeping wisteria covered bridge look at down there so that's why I'm doing that um, little arch line of the green foliage above and I'm going to come in now and add a thick rich layer of foliage that's kind of more in the foreground and just kind of go over this this is going to just sort of um, frame in this pretty little landscape and kind of make it feel like it's even more tucked in back there in the distance and it also really helps to draw our eyes into what's inside this uh, frame of foliage and notice how I'm turning my brush different ways so that I'm changing up the pattern and the flow of my foliage so I'm not always tapping it in the same direction And I'm going to just start to highlight a little bit by adding a bit of white and yellow to my brush. Not washing my brush out and not using any water. And then I'll just lightly pull and flick and drag 
uh, to give that sort of hanging moss or vines kind of a look. All right, I've got a little liner brush now. I'm gonna highlight my posts on my railing and then pull them all together. I'm also gonna start adding more highlights to and details to my bridge. So I'm highlighting the left side of each post. And when I highlight the, the little posts on my bridge, I'll be doing the opposite side for my highlights it'll change once I hit the middle and then I'm going to do a little line that goes on an angle at the base of each post as well so there's a few different ways you can paint your bridges um, and I'm going to be showing you soon i'm going to do a video on bridge painting coming up where we can you know do kind of an explore different types of bridges that we can make um, so stay tuned for that um, but i'm going to start adding my highlights down here on my foliage and my covered bridge with my mini mop brush a little bit of yellow and white and just a little bit of green my brush is dry i've only got paint in it and i'm just going to lightly tap 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 partially on my dark green and a little bit above so I've always got that dark shadow right at the bottom okay I'm going to take a bit of my purple and white now and I'm just turning my brush sort of sideways like that to create little flowers, little weeping wisteria flowers. If you don't have a small mop brush like this, just use a filbert. You can use any purple that you want. If you don't have purple, just take any blue and pink with a little bit of white and you can create a really pretty mauve lilac-y purple color. So I'm just gonna add a few more details to my bridge and just clean it up a little bit. Redo my highlights and shadows. All right, taking my flat brush with black and burnt sienna, I'm gonna start coming in and really creating some wiggly, twisted looking branches for this uh, big wisteria tree that's gonna be coming down from the top. We'll do a few of these that kind of twist and weave over one another. I'm gonna come below with a little bit more of my burnt sienna to warm those branches up. I'm going to come right back down here and just add more highlights and detail on my bridge. A few more waterfalls. And I want to add a little bit of purple to my white in and around my waterfalls. So I'm kind of going and glazing over with a little bit of that mauve or that lilac color. And it's really, really pretty just to add little hints of that here and there. Um, and I really want to do this because it's also complementary to that peach background that we've got, that sunset. Um, so it's really eye-catching all that peach and purple and blue that we've got going on in this painting. It works really well together.
Okay, so after doing that, adding that little bit of purple here and there and some more highlights, I'm going to start working on the wisteria now and I'm taking my angle brush and I'm tapping the bottom like you just saw both white and purple and you can see the bristles are kind of separated into it almost looks chunky on the, the end of my brush and I like that because that's going to give us that uh, really interesting um, cascading uh, flower effect for our wisteria and I'm not over blending overly blending my purple and white on my palette I want to get that natural look of blending and uh, highlights and shadows instantly on the canvas and the flowers as I'm painting them so that's a really fun way to paint and it saves you a lot of time uh, oftentimes if you do this you don't have to go back and re-highlight um, but yeah it's just kind of fun to paint like that and watch the colors um, you know it's kind of blend in and marble together on the canvas instantly so here I'm adding a little bit more white where I think it might be a bit too dark. I know it's going to dry darker because acrylic paint always does that. So keep that in mind, guys. If you uh, And you can definitely go back the next day if it's dried too dark. And, you know, acrylic paint is so forgiving that you can definitely add highlights and shadows whenever you want. Um, but I'm going to come in here with my liner brush and highlight the top, the tops of some of these branches to make them stand out a little bit more. And I'll finish this painting up by adding a, a, a final coat here and there and a few more little tiers and levels of my waterfalls. So I've got my ankle brush here. And if you guys would like to learn more on waterfalls and fantasy paintings, I've got a whole uh, playlist. I'll be sure to link that either at the end of this video and or below the video in the description. Now the last thing I'm doing here is adding a little bit of yellow and white uh, to change up the tone a little bit and have it sort of reflective of the warmth going on above and around. So I can still see all that blue and green. I'm just enhancing it with a little bit of that yellow and white. So this painting is all done. It was so fun to paint. I can't wait to see your versions on the Facebook group. Thanks for joining you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.